Hello, this is Mike, Whiskey Alpha 9 Papa India Echo with Ham Radio Deluxe. And the purpose of this video is to walk you through the changes made in the latest version of Ham Radio Deluxe version 6.8, released on the 16th of May, 2022. So in a nutshell, there were 75 changes made in Ham Radio Deluxe. It's one of the largest, in terms of the number of changes that we've made, it's one of the largest changes we've made in a few years. Um, some of the simple things that are in there, we've we fixed selections in solar progression. Let me show you how that works. Over here in uh, the display panel, you've got uh, selections that you can use. If you want to just see 2022, that's working. If you want to see just CW, you can see that. If you wanted to create one for FT4 or FT8, you could do that. You can see the top 100. So um, this is an item that uh, needed to get fixed, frankly, and we got that one done. In the same category, we've got the solar cycle progression. So it's been updated to pull down the latest data from NOAA. And it's actually got the new um, sunspot cycle number uh, algorithms in it. So it's good. Latest and up to date there. And then we've added support for the Fox Delta ST2. Real happy about that. Um, work uh, with a gentleman in India that, that makes them. Uh, we think real highly of that product, so encourage you to try them out. Um, band map, by the way, is now quick and, and much more accurate than it used to be. And I'll populate the uh, band map here for you so you can see it. And... Um, very much, uh, very useful. We've got some big plans for this over the course of time. Then uh, log book of the world members. There's an updated resource that we're now using for uh, log book of the world members. And instead of pulling it from a third party site, we can now pull it directly from log book of the world. And we've got the latest information there, which is really helpful. Eventually we'll let you parse that out by date. And speed. This thing is all about speed. Um, we focused on speed more than we focused on the feature or anything else. So I want to show you a little bit about the speed here in a moment. And then uh, the work status indicators. You now have work status indicator filters and alarms, meaning that you no longer have to manually create a needed list of countries and, and so on. It will automatically help you. Um, it, it know, the logbook knows what you need, and it is able to make that stuff happen automatically. And then I'll show you a little bit about HRD Alert, which is our hot new feature. One of the things as I go into this conversation about work status indicators, I think as I've talked to our beta testers and our customers, I think there's a point that's being missed here by a lot of customers. So I want to start with a brief review. Work status indicators are the most important part of logbook. Those are the things that enable you to accelerate your pace as a DXer, as a county hunter, um, someone who's seeking work to all zones, um, wants to get new band credits for uh, DXCC challenge. These are the things that will draw that out for you. And they're color coded, very simple. If it's red, it means that you've never worked this particular country on this band or mode. Um, or zone on this band or mode, or U.S. state or, you know, Canadian province or Australian state on this band or mode. And if it's red, you should go work it. If it's yellow, it means you've worked one on this band or mode, but you haven't confirmed it. So go work another one. Work them until you confirm them. And then if it's green, it means you've confirmed this particular thing. We'll call it an entity on the band or mode. So as it's red, green, and yellow. Very important. No need to color up the rest of the screen with other colors. It's red, green, or yellow. So it's a red X, a green check mark, or a yellow yield sign. And it allows you to know everything there is to know about what's on the screen. Let me tell you a little bit about HRD Alert. HRD Alert is a feature that we've added that works alongside WSJTX or JTDX and it pulls in the decodes that come off the air through JTDX or WSJTX 
and it brings them into logbook in such a way similar to the way you see DX cluster today, but brings them in so you can see whether or not you need certain DX countries or zones, states, grids, U.S. counties, um, provinces, um, guns, and so on. And so you can get audible alerts, email or text messages, um, and, you, and so you can do filtering based on what you need. You can look at only those stations calling CQ or stations calling you. It'll help identify those stations that are participating in Logbook of the World or EQSL. And then you can respond to acute CQ from within Ham Radio Deluxe Logbook in the HRD alert pane. And so it automatically logs those QSOs into your log like it has been with JTDX or WSJTX. And uh, we think you're really going to like it. Okay, now I'm going to start with uh, Ham Radio Deluxe Rig Control running. And um, as I've said before, I highly recommend that even if you don't have a rig to control, and I'm not connected to a radio right now either, but I've connected the demo radio. It's very helpful because it helps to automate the population of band mode and frequency into other programs. I'm going to click Logbook. And the thing I want to show here is how much faster this is. So we've added, um, in the 391 release, we've added work status indicators for things like uh, state and zones. And you can see them all here as there's a list of them over here on the left here under the layout. Added a lot of that stuff in the 391 release because we were planning to do this work. So with the DX cluster pane um, visible, I'm going to click on Connect, and we'll be able to see how much faster the DX cluster is in the latest version of Ham Radio Deluxe. That was pretty quick. I didn't edit the video. And as we've got things coming through, uh, we've got um, skimmer spots showing up here. You can see all this stuff populating into the into the uh, DX cluster pane. And if I come over here, I can see where it's being provided by the DX cluster. We can get state, or we can get grid, or we can get zones. And as I mentioned a while ago, this is all about color. So we've got red, green, or yellow telling me whether or not I've worked or confirmed those particular things. Now, before I go into HRD alert, let's talk about the work status indicators and the work status indicator uh, filters and alarms. In uh, the WSI tab, you can select whether or not you want to use um, QSLs in your log or logbook of the world confirmations in your log. I use both and uh, because those are the things that in my log I consider to be confirmed. And so um, if I look over here at work status indicator filters, Right now, I've only got banned for DXCC country listed. So I'm going to cancel out of that. If I come back and I set now the work status indicator filter, I can see here are the two countries out of 148 spots that are on the air right now that I need for new banned countries. Well, maybe if I want to, you know, I want to know more than that because you can select multiple ones. So I'm going to do work status indicator filters for ITU zone and CQ zone, let's say. Okay, so now I've got three items showing. We've got the two that I just had. Plus now I've got one here where there's an ITU zone, um, ITU zone 13, that I've never worked on 17 meters. So I could go and pick that one up. Again, if you're using other sorts of criteria, you can pick um, modes in with those as well. Or, But the way this works is that anything that's not confirmed for the boxes that you check is what you'll get to see. I'm going to select this and see if there's some more here. Because there's some mode um, opportunity, so to speak, that I've got out there. So this is um, this is how you really kind of start to um, pare down the amount of information that you're seeing. I had shown someone this uh, a few months ago, and they said, boy, Mike, that screen's really busy. 
and I don't know what to make of this. Well, one of the things you can do is use the work status filters and you won't have to see everything on the screen. In addition to that, if you're interested in DXCC, maybe CQ and ITU zones, come over in the layout and just remove state and grid and, uh, and leave those out and just pare it down to the stuff that you want to see. You can always hit the defaults button if you want to bring everything back, but that's how you can do it and get the, get everything kind of down to a manageable level. Then you've also got something called WSI alarms. Similarly, you can decide that whenever a new country on a band or mode, whenever a new CQ zone or an HRD alert, a new county comes up, then you can decide that you want to be alarmed uh, when that comes up. So I'm going to set that here and then um, I'm going to turn the alarm on and we'll see what happens if another one comes up. So we can see that we just had a, um, a new alert come up here and uh, you didn't hear it, but it made an announcement, told me it was there and it's there because I need this ITU zone and I selected that from my alarms. And here's another one. So I tell people that when you set up these WSI alarms, I'm going to turn it off, but you should really be careful how you want to start this off because start small, you know, start off with just, you know, DXCC band and get used to how that's going to work because if you turn it off, I just hit the filters and I intended to hit the alarms. But if you select everything, you're going to get alerted for a whole lot more than what you really had intended to. Let me show you real quickly how to get into HRD alert. And you've got logbook running. The button for it is right up here in the upper top where it says HRD alert. And you can click that and you can see I already have some decodes coming in. Okay, so I've got, I'm going to change to 17 meters. And uh, here pretty soon, I ought to start seeing some decodes come in. And you can see as they come in, they're going to color code these things based on whether or not they're calling CQ, which you see up above. Incidentally, if you've got six of them in WSJTX, you'll get six of them down here. And then um, you can select from the ones that are shown as to whether or not you want to work them or not. Same thing applies as before. I could set filters and alarms for any of these things. And you can see I've got U.S. County over here. So county hunters can start to do their county hunting with FT8 or FT4 in digital modes here. And it's really fast. So let me, let me show you when it gets to the end of this. By the time it's starting on the next time slot, all these things that need to be filled in are filled in. Of course, there aren't any counties in Japan, but we've got all the states and the uh, counties showing up, as well as zones and, and everything else that's relevant for um, that particular decode. Well, it wasn't my intention to do a, a full-blown demonstration of HRD alert. I think it's better for folks to just jump in and give it a go and enjoy it and happy to get feedback for it as well. But we think it's going to be a very helpful thing since I've been testing it and using it myself. I've increased by about 60 band uh, countries to uh, 2165. I think I was right at about 2100 or just under 2100. A couple months ago when we started working on this feature so um, I think you'll find it be very beneficial for building up your uh, challenge credits. So this is Mike with Ham Radio Deluxe in 73.
And the same thing is true over here in HRD Alert. So let me get us going here.